Let us pray. Most grace, Heavenly Father, each and every one here today needs a blessing. Each and every one needs comfort and peace. And we pray for that that you touch them with your Holy Spirit. Let us find the way to peace and comfort in this wicked world. But let us just walk through calmly knowing that we trust in you and your word. And again, Lord, give us joy in finding your word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We welcome everybody to our Christmas program today. I know you're going to enjoy it. The children have worked really hard. <coughs> Come on up. Wow, it's Christmas. <coughs> Yeah. 
special. Boy, somebody was in the hospital. Yeah, somebody left the price on Christmas. So, what's the big deal? What difference does it make? What difference does it make? Boy, are you dumb. Chris is what Christmas is all about. Why? That's how it all began. <coughs> Please turn to him 103 if we sing the first verse. <coughs> ancestral home with his <coughs> registration. And because Joseph was a member of the royal line, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea. King David's ancient home journey there from the Galilean village of Nazareth. Wow, angel. 
a bright light. No wonder the shepherds were scared. I would have been too. <coughs> what? Have you ever seen an angel? No, but Grandma says I look like one, except for the time I used her knitting yarn as a kite string. Then she called me something else. <laughs> you know, that first Christmas must have been terrific with the angel <coughs> star, wise men, and shepherds. And I thought Christmas was better now. God sure must love Jesus to make all that happen on the first Christmas. I bet the whole world was singing just like angels. <coughs> Join us as we sing the first verse of Hark the Herald Angels Sing on page 88. <coughs> Please join us as we sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, verse number three. <clears throat> Mom! 
depressing tales of anger, hatred, killings, and maliciousness. As we learn our Sunday school lesson today, the thing that is most important, we trust God with all our heart and all our might. Dark, drear days, January and so forth, help to give us in a bad mood, so we got to not think on all the things that's going on in our life that causes us to be unhappy. You know, we dwell on those things. But God says, think of those things that are lovely, nice. You know, my wife, Linda, both her parents died during Christmas week. So it's this time of year she can think about that. But we don't need to think about that. We need to think about how wonderful they are having in heaven and not having to live in this world today. So think about and do some exercise Get those dolphins swimming in your head. Actually, they're dolphins, but that's it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but whatever's lovely, whatever's good. Think about maybe, you know, in a couple of months, I might go to Florida. Or I might do this, I might do that. Keep the good things in front of your mind. We must spend our time and efforts in a place where joy, like a river flow. Where does that joy come from? From God's holy word, the Bible. My prayer for all is that we seek to find in God's word what the world cannot give. <clears throat> Look at the alternative to this world that God offers, a full and abundant life. Jesus says, I've come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. And we are not going in those places. We're not going in the Bible to find how to have that full and abundant life. <clears throat> A life full of joy and peace. Jesus tells us in John 15, 11, These things have I spoken to you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Are we wanting joy in our life? Are we going to all the wrong places to find it? We need to find it in God's Word. In Hebrews, the first chapter, second verse, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus thought that was joy. And he tells us, Jesus saw beyond the cross a time when you and I will have unspeakable joy when we see him face to face. Oh, what a joyous day that's going to be. Are we prepared? Are we ready to meet him face to face? Isaiah tells us we must trust in the Lord whose strength never fails. No matter what kind of mess we're in, no matter how we got there, God is going to give us the strength to go on and to get out of it. I should not fear, Isaiah says, for he is my strength, my son of joy and salvation. There's coming a day when the whole earth will see His glory. It's been preached from old. All of the Old Testament tells us also that He's coming again. What a sad day for those who are not ready, who've rejected Him, who don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. But what a day of rejoicing that's going to be when you and I as Christians march down that path and fly up to meet Him. He's coming again which will bring the greatest joy that cometh in the morning, riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. So let us find the joy that salvation brings. We're in Isaiah, the 12th chapter, to start with. And, you know, I, I know that mule philosophy. You know what the old saying about a mule? You can take him to the water, but you can't make him drink. Well, we can tell people about Jesus Christ. We can tell people about the Bible, but they don't get in there and read and believe so that their joy can be made full. The Bible teaches that the joy is a threefold event. First, the coming of a babe in a manger. What was his mission? To die on the cross. That we might have eternal life. He did all of this for us. And He's coming to our hearts and minds as our Savior that we might have a full and abundant life now and forevermore. Don't let think you can't have joy in life. Get back into God's Word and study and understand. And then we need to know that one day He's coming again which will bring the greatest joy that cometh in the morning as we said, riding on a cloud, shining like the sun in John 15, 11, he says, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. The joy that Jesus gives lasts. You know how it is in this world. We're happy for one minute, then something can strike us, and boy, we get upset and we get down <coughs> in the next minute. Because we're living in this world, depending on this world. But we don't need to do that because... He endured the cross for us. In Hebrews 12, 2, he said, I delight to do your will, O oh my God. That's what we need to be doing. We need to have that delight to find the Word in God that will change our life, change us. We'll be fun to be around. And he tells us Psalms 48, 48, chapter 8, verse, This is joy that we can count on for all eternity. I delight in to do your will, oh my God. Not for a few days or moments. You know, we can get happy. Sometimes we can go here, yonder, and everywhere, and we're so happy. And then the next minute something strikes. But not for a few days or moments as an earthly joy lasts, but God's joy lasts for all eternity. And well, what is the source of our joy? It starts with an S, A L V A. T-I-O-N. Salvation. That's the source of our joy. And we're going to find in the 12th chapter, what day will our joy be complete? Tomorrow, next day, Wednesday, New Year's Day, when He comes again. It's going to be complete. And we are when we are with God as Christians. In Isaiah, the 12th chapter, the first verse, He says, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise Thee, Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comforts me. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, he comforts me all the time. You know, I, I do a lot of stupid things. I can tell you what they are. But I do a lot of stupid things in my life. And uh, having way back when, I 
used to tell the people I made a mistake in 1946, and uh, people come up to me and want to know what it is. <laughs> I said, it's just kind of a joke. So. But uh, what does salvation do for us? Because on that day, the end of time, salvation has turned His anger away from us because we're saved by the blood of the spotless Lamb. Isn't that wonderful? Understanding the wonderful gift that God gives us should promote us to praise Him. So let's together say, Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Here we go. Praise, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. God through salvation has forgiven me my sin. Well, who brings us salvation? We know, of course, God through Jesus Christ. In the third verse, second verse, he says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Can we do that? Can we trust and not be afraid? Because He's got us in the palm of His hand and one day we'll be set free from these doors and bars of clay and we'll be in heaven with Him because He says, For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall He draw water out of the wells of salvation. Where should we put our trust? Isaiah tells us we must trust in the Lord whose strength never fails. I should not fear. Now I have fear come upon me. You're going to have fear come upon you and you've got to work out of it by trusting in God to take care of it. So we can draw a well, joy from the well that never will run dry. Receiving salvation through Jesus our Savior should have us praising all day long. We should be going around saying praise you the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. Somebody comes to me and says, You're so lucky. I said, No, I've been blessed. Praise the Lord. And then he tells us in the fourth verse, And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord. Call upon His name. Declare His doings among the people. Now who needs to know about all these things? The people out there. Are we keeping this as a secret? <clears throat> Everybody you run into, you need to ask them, Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you don't, let me explain to you. And so we have to have the knowledge of the Bible to explain to them, which is Romans 10, 9, and 10 will help you. Make mention that His name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for He hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Finally, something to shout about. Tired of all the backbiting and hatred that divides our country and the world. You know what the really problem is? A country has lost the unity of Jesus Christ in the Bible. They no longer have to go back to the Bible. They ignore the Bible. And this guy says, oh, I'm right. And this person says, I'm right. And they almost fight over it. But if they go back to the Bible where the unity is, our nation could be unionized again. So hatred that divides our country and the world. What a sad mess. Look at the alternative that God offers. He gives us such a wonderful life if we choose blessings instead of curses. He says, I put before you blessings and curses. Choose blessings. He says, I put before you life and death. Choose life. There's coming a day when the whole world will finally see His glory. This has been preached from old and all the Old Testament. What a sad day for those who rejected Him. But what a day of rejoicing that will be for us. Now we look at John the 15th chapter. Let us work to keep our joy strong. The Bible tells us not neglect so great a salvation. Then we will be keeping our joy strong. We must stay close to God. The way you stay close to God, he says, abide in me. And the way we do that is we pray. As Jesus says, pray without ceasing. You should smother everything we do every day, every hour, every moment with prayer. Don't let it get away from you. Don't forget to pray. Don't walk out into the world without having prayed. I know uh, my man back there that fixes all the light wires, I bet he was praying over the weekend, weren't you? You know, and I used to work in the computers at all the computers for... RJR and different companies, uh, they'd make such a mess that I'd, I'd pray, can I ever get this fixed or not? So we need to stay close to God. And he tells us in John the 15th chapter, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. 
Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Do you have some joy stealers in your life? Do people just, you know, you have some people that just make you upset the moment they speak to you? It's kind of like that. Uh, everybody loves Raymond. You know how the mother can, <laughs> you think she's giving you a compliment and she insults you. <laughs> you know, some people that way. They insult you just to mean it. Or even just speak to you, you get upset. But do you have any excise baggage that bothers our joy? Things like fear, hatred, lust, greed, evil actions, anger. We've come to the right place. God says He will get rid of it for us. He will cut off all that stuff and make it new. Who is the link between God <coughs> and us? We have a link. Jesus. Yeah, you know, on the, get on the computer, hit this link, takes you there. Well, when you get on praying, Jesus takes us up there. He's our link. So, through the word which is sharper than any two-edged sword, he will shape our thoughts and actions. It says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And he said, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Stay in God's loving arms, as He asked us in the fourth, uh, fourth verse, Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. You know, you go to a grape orchard or <coughs> where they're raising these grapes, they're hooked onto a vine. And that's the way we are. Jesus is our vine to stay close. And he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You know, we, we have some songs that bring these things out that we need to sing. As you walk around every day, sing a song. Sing some of these songs that will encourage you to stay with God. Remember the one that says, Fast falls the even tide in life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. All on the altar, dear Jesus, all on the altar I pray. Oh, what a fellowship, oh, what joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, I've asked the people here to memorize it, so it'd be good for you to do that, because the 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and all your might. And in the six verses, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. What kind of career are you going to have? What kind of marriage are you going to have? Who are you going to marry? He will direct us in all these ways so that we won't be regretting what we've done. Well, if you don't abide with Jesus, what happens? You know, uh, my father, if an apple tree didn't bear fruit, you know what he did? He cut it down and burned it. You know, I begged with him one year, Dad, give me this tree one more year. He said, All right, I will. And so all of us have more time now, the ability to not get caught up in the fire. But he says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. That's a wake up call, isn't it? You ever had a wake up call at the hotel? You know, so that you won't oversleep and you may get that meeting or whatever you want to do. Well, this is a wake up call from God for us to answer that call and choose life over death. God puts life and death out there for us. That's why we have the fear of God, is not, He has put out a plan for us, and if we don't follow that plan, there's terrible things that's going to happen to us. This message should not be taken lightly because God says, I put life and death before you. Choose life. Well, there are some good news. You know, I've not been beating you up a little bit. I hope not. Uh, I hope the Bible is, but not me. So, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So you abide in God's word and I ask for a Cadillac. That's not what he means. He says you will learn to ask for good things instead of the bad things or the 
physical things of this world. It says, Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. When, when we abide in Jesus, we ask for godly things. What is it we need more than anything in life? Wisdom. To do, handle all the things of this world. Comfort in this evil world. He says he'll pour out literally upon you all the wisdom of this world and the peace that passes all understanding. I won't be torn into pieces by difficult things that come my way. I will fear them for a moment, but I will turn it over to God and God's will. God provides us with the power to do these things that they too will recognize the mighty power of God. Let us turn each activity over to Jesus. Driving, parenting. You know, if you've got kids, it's such an easy job raising kids anymore. And career. I thought I'd get a chuckle out of the parents. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Career. Marriage. Finances. Spiritual life. Mentally, physical. <coughs> abide in Jesus and all things. Pray for your children. Pray for your grandchildren. I pray for my children and grandchildren two or three times a day that God would keep them safe, that He'd help them to do, have a great day, do great things. And, and you need to do that. Pray for them. Well, where is the best place to stay? Stay. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. We need to practice active dependence. That's why we, He asked us to pray about all things. And loving obedience. As we follow God's commandments, we can walk confident and carefree through life. Knowing how He is the I'm in the palm of his hand and nothing can happen. He said, don't worry about things happening on this earth, but be concerned about the next life. And, you know, a lot of people don't know they've been forgiven. We have, I know a person, a friend of mine who did something wrong about 35 years ago, and this is a true story. <laughs> and she's still trying to make up for it. She's trying to make up for that mistake. And she doesn't realize God has forgiven us. So she goes out and does all these good Christian things, trying to get God's favor. Much like a child whose father uh, didn't show them enough love, they go out and try to prove to the father that they need to be loved. But she has been forgiven, and she's trying to work to make up for it. Well, the greatest thing we can do is abide in God's love. Because Jesus says the fires of this world will choke us. Choke us in God's Word. If we're not in God's Word first and pray, the things that happen will choke us up in this world. And Jesus said that. The cares of this world choke the Word and becomes unfruitful. Well, let's watch and pray. A greater day is coming. We want to hear God say to us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee Ruler over many things, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Looking at the conditions of this world, I can't wait till he takes me out of these bars of clay, takes me on into heaven. We don't know how long we've got, maybe an hour, maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years, but we've got to be prepared. And you know, all of these shootings and things happening around the world, the thing I'm most concerned about is the people that got shot, were they prepared? So don't go away not prepared and find that regardless of how great we find joy on this earth, we need to be reminded to follow God's word to keep our joy strong. Acts 15, 13, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit.